Hey everyone, it's Josh here. In today's software tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to build your own custom GPTs in ChatGPT Premium. Creating custom GPTs is a great way to get customized responses from ChatGPT based on the outcome that you want. I have tons of custom GPTs myself, ones for each specific task that I want ChatGPT to do, without me having to constantly prompt ChatGPT every single time. I have templates automatically loaded in, different types of people that ChatGPT will roleplay as, and more. And today, we're going to be showing you exactly how you can build these your own. Now, at the current moment, creating custom GPTs in the GPT web store is only locally available to people who pay for ChatGPT Premium, but that could change in the future. So if you have access to that, you would have access to the GPT web store. In this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know to create your own custom GPTs. So let's jump right into it. Now, before we get into this video talking about how to build your own custom GPTs, I want to give a quick shout out to our AI newsletter, Neural Frontier. We do tons of great stuff over in this newsletter, like publishing the latest AI news, tips, tricks, and trends, and a few cool AI tools that you might not have heard of. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out with the link in the description below. With that being said, let's get back to the video. All right, so here we are on the GPT web store. As it says, discover and create custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and any combination of skills. There's tons of versions already created for us by the community, and we can see which ones are trending, which ones were created by the ChatGPT team, which ones are good for writing, productivity, but if we want to make our own, then we can go to the top right-hand corner and hit create. And here we are on the new GPT screen. Now that we're on this screen, there are actually two ways that you can go and build your own custom GPTs. The first one, by simply talking to ChatGPT. It's the simplest way for anybody who doesn't really understand how the configurations work. You can simply go onto here and, as it says, say, make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps format my code. So let's do exactly that. We'll say, make a software engineer who helps format my code. And we'll just enter that in and it will configure the new GPT for you. It's going to update that GPT there and it'll take a little bit of a second to go and code those prompts in. Oh, and now we have GPT Code Formatter Pro. Does that sound good to us? Yeah, that sounds good. And once we've got that, we can then give more context information and things that we want the GPT to actually do. So right now it's going to actually go and generate that profile picture. And there we go. We have Code Formatter Pro, a custom chat GPT that we've created, but it's not very customized yet, is it? We haven't given it any more information. We've just told it it's a software engineer. So let's say for myself, who is a React developer, that I wanted to write exclusively in JavaScript and write custom React code and pretty much make it my own. I can give it all the knowledge required by simply giving it links, etc. I could say something very specific to software engineering like, okay, I want you to only write in JavaScript and create React front-end components. So we've got that there. It'll go and create the GPT customization that needs to be done. ChatGPT will take that for a second and it'll say, great, Code Formatter Pro is now set to only write in JavaScript and create React front-end components. And immediately we can start testing it out on the right-hand side. All right, so for our new custom GPT, Code Formatter Pro, we've got a custom chat GPT right on the right hand side so that we can actually go and test this in real time and make changes if we need to. So in this case, I've got code formatter pro and I'll say, um, clean up this code. I'll, I'll give it a little piece of code here, for example. And once we've given that to chat GPT, it'll go and give us the cleaned up version of our function, which gives us the improvements made. Now that's a pretty basic chat GPT response. We gave it some code, it cleaned it up. That's pretty okay. But we want to make this even more customized. So I'm actually going to adjust it and say, give me an overview of what you do, as well as learning resources based on how you solve the specific problem. We're going to hit enter on that. And it's going to go and make those updates for our GPT so that it's now customized even more. It's not just giving us what every other chat GPT does. It's going to give us customized responses with combined instructions and more knowledge. So using the exact same prompt we did last time, we're going to say analyze this code. All right, so now we've given it the exact same prompt that we just gave it, but we have an even better response. Because I told it to actually go and do some extra things, not only just giving me the traditional response, it's done exactly that. Because not only does it improve the code here, but it also gives me the improvements made, much as I asked, and gives me the learning resources required to actually explain each single step of what it actually changed. Very, very smart. Once your custom GPT is all ready to go, all you need to do is go to the top right-hand corner of the screen and hit create. And we'll see who do we want to share the GPT with? Only me, anyone with a link, or actually publish it to the GPT store. In my case, I only want me, and I'll hit save here. And there we go. We have a new custom GPT created ready for us. All right, so now that we've gone through the process of actually creating a custom GPT using the ChatGPT interface, we're gonna go a lot more in depth on how to actually create and configure your own custom GPT using all the manual ways. So coming to the same tool here, just not on the create tab, we are now on the configure tab. We can go and actually name our GPT, upload an image to it, add a short description about what the GPT does, and actually go and add all of our instructions. 
In addition to that, we can also add our conversation starters and upload any knowledge. Now, this would be the point where you could upload any sort of PDFs relevant that your GPT would need to understand. Let's say, for example, you had a textbook that you wanted to be able to pull specific pieces of information from. You could upload a PDF of the textbook here and say, oh, check in this section for this. And the GPT would be able to pull and retrieve information from a specific section for you or other pieces of information that you might need to have for this specific answer. Let's say you're studying to be a lawyer and there's a very specific article that is useful to you and what you're trying to learn. Well, you can upload that to your custom GPT and now you've got a lawyer GPT, for example. After that, we have the ability to actually go and check if we have web browsing enabled in this custom GPT and DALI image generation enabled in this custom GPT. If you're never gonna generate an image using it, I would highly recommend just unchecking it here. And we also have another checkbox that by default is unchecked and that's code interpreter and data analysis. And this allows the GPT to actually run its own code. When enabled, this GPT can analyze data, work with files you've uploaded, do math and more. So I highly recommend that if you're gonna be doing anything with a custom GPT, you always enable this code interpreter and data analysis, just because it's gonna make your custom GPT so much smarter. We also have another thing at the bottom here that says create new action. Well, what does that do? Well, if we click on it, we can actually have our GPT retrieve information or take actions outside of ChatGPT. The authentication being none, API key, or OAuth. We can actually have our custom GPT interact with websites that we set up. It can go in and interact with them as if it was a person. How cool is that? Now, this part of the custom GPT section is gonna be for the much more advanced people. So if you're gonna be doing anything that allows your GPT to retrieve information or take actions outside of ChatGPT, you're probably already a developer and already understand how that works. But for this new GPT that we're creating here, we're not gonna to need to do any of that. So let's create something, let's say stock GPT, for example. All right, so I've gone ahead and configured our new custom GPT and here's how it looks. I'm calling it stock GPT. Recommend me stocks based on what is trending right now online. This GPT will act as a stock analysis tool. It will perform the following actions for each prompt. One, browse the web and find the five stocks that are trending the most right now. Two, analyze why these stocks are trending and compare it to the fear greed index. Three, give recommendations on what to do regarding the stock information. And four, create a report using all the information retrieved on what to do and write it in a way that the average person would understand. As you can see here, Everything that I've put into this custom GPT is an instruction that I would typically have to give ChatGPT sequentially. So I'd have to put in the first instruction and then the second instruction. Now, by creating my own custom GPT, I've got access to all that information simply from one singular prompt. So let's test it out. So I'm simply gonna write what's happening today and we're gonna put it in there. And it's gonna search the web trending stocks for today's date that I'm recording this video. And it's gonna browse some market sites, okay. And it's going to go through all of our instructions step by step and figure out all the details. So we've got all of these details about current price, market cap, all that stuff. And it's going to go through and create the five stocks, as I mentioned, browse the web to find the five stocks trending the most. The next thing it's going to do is give recommendations for short term investors, for long term investors and give general advice. And it's going to create that report right here. So in this instance, I can actually go and just create it all manually. Instead of having to type into a ChatGPT interface to get my customization done, I can simply put in the detailed instructions for what I want ChatGPT to do. Or in this case, the custom GPT I created called stock GPT. And with that said, again, the way to access it is simply by hitting that save GPT. And then I'm gonna set it to be only me, hit save, and then boom, you're able to access it from your ChatGPT home screen in the top left-hand corner. And there we go. In just a few quick minutes, I was able to create a couple of really good custom GPTs. They have custom instructions built into them, icons and names. And from here, anytime I wanna do something with these specific custom GPTs, instead of having to write the prompt and series of instructions in, I simply get a well-tailored structured way to actually input my prompts because these GPTs know all the instructions already. They have all the knowledge. As always, my name is Josh Mountain. I look forward to seeing what kind of custom GPTs you'll create and I'll see you in the next one.